Hi, first graders. Today we're going to talk about something new in math, something we haven't done. Before we begin, I would like to point to the symbol that the arrow is also pointing to, and I want you to tell an adult what that symbol means to you. If you said this symbol is a subtraction symbol and it means to take away, you are correct. Subtraction means to take away. When we take away, we are usually taking away from a bigger number. And when we get our answer, or otherwise known in subtraction as the difference, the difference or answer is normally smaller than the first number. So today we're going to work on the I can statement. I can subtract multiples of 10 from a two-digit number. So I'm going to say it again, and I would love for you to repeat it back with me. I can subtract multiples of 10 from a two-digit number. So, I can subtract multiples of 10 from a two-digit number. But what is a 10? So, in our base 10 blocks, we know a 10 is the one that's long and has the cubes together. So, we can think of a 10 as also being 10 ones. So on this side, I have 10 ones, and if I stacked them on top of one another, it would make 110. We can also see this when we look at a hundreds chart. In a hundreds chart, you start with the smallest number, and as you go down, it gets bigger and bigger all the way to 100. But in that first row, it goes 1 to 10. So if I pull that first row to the side, I can think of each square and that first row as one, one. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I know that first row in a hundreds chart and every row after is going to be the same as one, ten because there are ten ones. Today we're going to focus, though, more on multiples of 10. But what are multiples of 10? Multiples are 10 are any number that has a zero in the one spot. So if you look on the right side of your hundreds chart, you will see on numbers going down being multiples of 10 because they all have a zero in the ones place. So let's practice counting by multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, today we're only focusing on two digit numbers. So that's why over here I stopped at 90 because 90 is the last multiple of 10 that has two digits. And when we get to 100, it has an extra digit in there. So we're only going to be focusing on numbers from 10 to 90. Let's take the number 50 as an example. The number 50 has a 0 in the 1's place and a 5 in the 10's place. So I know the number 50 is the same as 5 10's. If I counted each of these squares, and I know each square represents a 1, I would know the number 50 has 50 ones, but I can also think of it as 5 tenths. When using a hundreds charts, we've talked about numbers getting um, bigger as you go down. So we know that when we want to add, we're going to go down the hundreds chart. But what happens if we want to subtract using a hundreds chart? We're going to go the opposite direction. So we are going to start at the bottom and move up. Because when we go up the hundreds chart, the numbers get smaller. And we know when we subtract, we take away. So the answer or difference is going to be smaller. Let's take this example. My example says, Fit, or I'm sorry, 70 minus 30 equals, and we have to figure out what the difference is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at 70, because it's the first number in my subtraction problem, and I'm going to take away the second number 
from the first number. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to start at the number 70. Can you find it on the hundreds chart? Here it is. 70 starts with a 7 and ends with a 0. Now I'm going to subtract 30. Well, I know 30 is the same as 3 tens because there's a 3 in the tens place. And I know each row of a hundreds chart represents 110. So I'm going to go up three times to represent that I'm subtracting 30. So starting at 70, let's go up three times to represent 70 minus 30. So we can count as 10, 20, 30. And where did I land? I landed on the number 40. So 70 minus 30 equals 40. 40. Hundreds charts are great tools to help us solve subtraction problems using multiples of 10. We can also use something else that we've used before. We can use base 10 blocks. So in my example, I have 50 minus 20 equals, and once again, we have to find the difference. When we subtract, we start with the greatest number in the problem. What is our greatest number? It is 50. And here I provided the base 10 blocks already. I have 50 ones, which is the same as 5 tenths. So we can count them 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now I need to take away 20 because I see the, the subtraction symbol. And I know when I see that, I need to take away. So a way I can do this is drag my tens, I'm sorry, my base 10 blocks away from the hole. So I took away 20, 10, 20, and I got rid of them. I put them in the trash because I don't need them anymore. So I need to figure out the difference, what is left over, and I can do that by counting what is left. 10, 20, 30. So the problem, 50 minus 20 equals 30. This is what you're gonna be doing on your seesaw activity today. So you're gonna have a problem listed in the middle and up top. Read the subtraction problem and solve by dragging the base 10 blocks into the trash can because you are taking away. So I start with my whole, so my biggest number. My number is 60, and I can double check by counting my base 10 blocks. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Now I have to take away 40. The number 40 has four in the tens place, so I know I need to take away four tens. What I'm gonna do is grab that, use that hand tool, to move four tens into my trash can. So I did 10, 20, 30, 40. Now, what is the difference? I can count what's left, 10, 20. I will use my pencil or pen tool to write the number 20 on that blank line. If you would like, you can grab your hundreds chart from your green take home folder just to make sure you're writing the numbers correctly and just to use as a guide for practice. You are going to go through and do each problem. There are 10. So if you look at the slides on the side, you will have 10 to complete. When you finish all 10, hit that green check button up at the top. Good luck first grade and remember if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me.